Thank you, Mary Ann, and uh, good morning, and uh, welcome once again to the sanctuary of our Lord. We are uh, privileged to uh, come together in uh, Word and Sacrament once again this morning. We will be following the uh, Divine Service uh, 3. All the letter G is printed out for you in your worship folder. And before we begin our service, we just want to take a moment to welcome any guests or visitors with us today. Uh, great to have you join with us. Uh, if you've not been here before, please sign our guest book, and we do invite you to worship with us again. Our opening hymn is 782. It's entitled, Gracious God, You Send Great Blessings. We'll stand on the last verse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You provide us all that we need to support this body and life. You gave the ultimate sacrifice of your body on the cross for us. Help us to use the blessings you provide to further your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our epistle reading for this morning on the back of your worship folder is going to be our sermon text from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 9, 
and 13 through 15, and we read it together. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he has started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but by the earnestness of others, that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Will you please rise for the Holy Gospel? Our Gospel is in Mark 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet. And implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, who had suffered much under many physicians and spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself the power had gone out of him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kume, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Textual service based on our message is the epistle reading. And that's from 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 9, and 13 through 15. Dear friends in Christ, is the government too generous with our money? Well, talk about a loaded question. I can only imagine the answers floating in all of your heads right about now. Most of you get a little or a lot upset about the way your tax dollars are used. So is the government too generous? Do we ever find it tough to be generous with the money we do control? The Apostle Paul in our text found some poor Christians who were pleading for the privilege to be generous. Can we be like them? Can God's generosity feed ours? First of all, we need the Lord's help. It doesn't come naturally. It is a learned behavior. But what are some roadblocks that get in our way of being generous? We might give too much. After all, we have ourselves and our family to look after. Now, some do have to be careful with their finances, but many are blessed way beyond what we envisioned when we were kids. Do you ever get, feel like you give too much of your time or talent or treasure? Another roadblock that we have is that we think we can never give enough to make a difference. Well, the worlds of our need, or the needs of our world, are great. Yes, entities can use our dollars, but they also need volunteers who can share their God-given special talents with others. Our generosity can be misused. That is true. Sin is still around us, friends. Maybe we don't feel our generosity is appreciated. Do you always remember to thank a gracious giver? I've told you before, that was drilled into me by my mom. A simple thank you no. Now I think the older generation thinks that the younger generation is less appreciative. They do send less notes, that is true. But maybe you get a text or a social media post. You see, we need to pass thankfulness on to others. None of these should be excuses. Don't let the devil have you thinking that everything you have is mine, mine, mine. Now Paul provides some help for growing a generous spirit. Jesus shows God's generosity to us. Paul in verse 9. For you know the God, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Jesus did not have a lot of cash. Jesus never owned a home. Materially wealthy, he was not. And as far as we know, he could only afford sandals. But Christ provided spiritual wealth. Sin is the spiritual debt that we owe to God. So then forgiveness earned for us by Jesus on the cross is the spiritual wealth by which he makes us rich. Romans 5, 8, but God shows his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This generous God helps us to be generous. And the Spirit is at work. We give because we care. And that starts in our heart. You see, the Macedonians first gave themselves to the Lord. Then they begged to take part in the relief of the saints. 
You see, generous comes from the French word meaning noble birth. We are of noble birth spiritually. Children of the King, brothers and sisters of the Prince of Peace. Generosity isn't about amount. It's about attitude. I like that. I hope you do too. Verse 3. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will. Free will. We are generous because we care. And then we give to thank God. Verse 2, in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Maybe their property taxes were going up and grocery prices have us shaking our heads in the aisles. But we are still the most blessed people in the world. I want you to look at our food prices compared to other parts of the globe. House interest rates of 6 to 7 percent. But some of you remember 15 to 20 percent rates in the 70s or when you bought your home. And I've looked back at our gas and electricity bills, and they're not that much higher than 20 years ago. I still have ours, and yes, I looked. We can complain all we want, but look at our salary and our 401k and 403b or the things in our closet. I mean, I could wear a different t-shirt every day for the next three months and probably still have enough to make it to Thanksgiving. I mean, it's amazing. We're blessed by God. We're taken care of by God. Now here on earth and better in eternity. And we might have potholed streets, but gold avenues of heaven await us. Because God gives so much to us, we can be generous with others. Doesn't generosity feel good? I mean, not in a name a park after me good, but in knowing that God is using you for the betterment of the sliver of earth you occupy. God always blesses us from the cross of Jesus so that we can be generous in some way to someone. This week we look for a way to be generous. That doesn't involve money. So that others may be blessed by your generosity. For Jesus' sake. Amen.
This morning, the prayer of the church is printed out for you on pages 3 and 4. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have To the Lord from whom our help comes, that as he has brought us into the holy Christian church and made Christ our shield from every enemy, so he would preserve us in such faith until at last he brings us out of this world into resurrection forevermore. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the church, that God would give us generous hearts to supply the saints from our abundance, seeing that Christ has made us rich by his humble poverty. For our preachers, that they may serve for the sake of Christ's call, not earthly gain. And for all Christians who have received excellence in faith, speech, knowledge, and every gift of God's word, that they may provide richly for the preaching of the gospel and the work of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For every Christian home, that our gracious Lord would bestow on them his never-ending compassion, that he would turn parents in kindness to their children, that he would make children ready in obedience and love toward their parents and each other. For the young, that they would learn discipline and trust in God, and for fathers, that they would not exasperate their children, but be examples of devotion to the fear and instruction of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those in need, that as God did not turn aside the bold request of Jairus, nor the timid faith of the woman, so he would drive away our fears and give us believing faith. For the sick and suffering, especially remembering former member Beth Kyle, the daughter-in-law of Cleo Cordy, who suffered a stroke a couple of weeks ago, continue to see that she improves and watch over her. We also pray for Andy Benjamin, who had a fall last night. We pray for our former secretary, Sandria Sambura, who had a fall, was not found for four days, broke her back, and now they have found cancer in her body and time is short. And then just this morning before coming out here, we found that our current secretary, Karen Dale, has been taken up to Peoria and is hospitalized as well. We pray for those who mourn, especially remembering this week the family of Janet Evans. Please be with us all at her graveside service. May all of these people know and believe Christ will awaken the dead on the last day, as if from a mere sleep. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who commune, that they may seek worthily the medicine of immortality given in the Lord's Supper, believing that as Christ on earth always used his divine powers as a man to heal and save, so here in the Blessed Sacrament he is bodily present to deliver his healing and saving power to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feats of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ in true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which Christ presents his body and blood to us for forgiveness. That you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood, and that you then externally receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a guarantee and pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command and his own words, administer and receive the sacrament.
together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be and abide with you always. Good morning. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, we've been running the thing about James Martin's installation. That'll be next Saturday. So if you are going, uh, there's a website in your uh, bulletin. Uh, please uh, let them know you're coming. Then I'd just like to point out that uh, also in your bulletin, if you're coming to Janet Evans' service out at uh, Park Hill on uh, Wednesday, it's in the south section of the cemetery. They told me it's uh, near the Bible or something, so if you know anything about that, it doesn't mean anything to me, but uh, it's in that area, and there will be a, a tent out there, uh, as you know. Also, uh, for the office, uh, since I just found out about care, and I'm not sure what to say, so uh, hopefully you don't have any bulletin announcements, and uh, we'll try to get that figured out this week as we go ahead. And as the hymn said, uh, you face your tasks every day. So it, it has been a crazy week. Uh, it's been emotional for me. So I don't want to say too much about it. Uh, other than uh, Tony mentioned, uh, for us, it is the circle of life. Uh, we are still waiting for the baby. And I did talk to the baby on Thursday as we were heading over to Fort Wayne and asked uh, her or him to come. While we were in Indiana, we even took an extra uh, set of clothes just in case, uh, but that did not happen. As you know, we were over there for a funeral of uh, Tony's second mother, 
the family she lived with when we were dating. And while we were there at the funeral, a friend of ours that's known us for 35 years uh, said to Tony and I that uh, she could not see us being grandparents. She can picture a lot of other people being grandparents, but she cannot see us being grandparents. Well, on the way home from Indiana, Tony and I thought a lot about that, and we called Carson and Elizabeth and said that we are out. Um, but uh, Carson said, would we still consider babysitting? And I said, have your lawyer contact ours. So I just want you to know in the midst of all this, I haven't lost my sense of humor, and I hope you don't either. Thank you. 